the Snack Master. Uh, I've returned from an extended hiatus, and honestly, before I even get to the beverage today, um, I want to offer you, uh, the members of Snack Master Nation, a sincere thanks for all your messages of encouragement um, that came into my inbox while uh, I was taking a break from producing snack review content. Um, I didn't really announce it to anybody, but um, I spent about 11 weeks at a uh, snack reviewing retreat uh, up in the Poconos. Um, there was a special McDonald's built just for the occasion, uh, just like they did when they filmed Mac and Me. And um, I was really elated to be invited to it by some of my mentors uh, in the space who taught me a lot um, as we all uh, took turns um, swapping our phones out and sitting in a uh, abandoned uh, 2004 Toyota Camry uh, and reviewing different items, um, talking directly into it, um, discussing different uh, places to get royalty-free music. Um, so, you know, I just want to express that I am really grateful to have had the opportunity, um, and it's given me a refreshed perspective um, on doing this stuff for you guys. Uh, really means a lot to me that people, um, you know, care about what I have to say about uh, a new soda or chip. Anyway, today I'm going to be taking a look at Mountain Dew Summer Freeze, a all new dew um, for the summer of 2023. Getting up close and intimate with the bottle here, um, we see that Summer Breeze claims to be due with a blast of Summer Americana. Uh, natural and artificial flavors. There are no... I mean, every Mountain Dew they've ever made has exactly the same list of ingredients. Um, so there's no hints ingredient-wise on what this might be flavored like that I recognize from Earth. There's no... I mean, the color doesn't mean anything, you know. I mean, they made a gingerbread one, and it was, like, gray. So, you know, blue could be blueberry, blue raspberry, blue cherry, um, blue papaya. I mean, who knows? Uh, I have a suspicion that this is going to taste exactly like pretty much every limited edition Mountain Dew flavor that they've made for the last three years. Um, by which I mean it will taste like generic gummy worms that you get at the gas station, because that has been my flavor experience with basically every dew, uh, outside of the normal lineup for some time. The shark one, generic gummy worms. The 4th of July one, generic gummy worms. Um, so we'll see what's up with this. Uh, some guys hanging out of an ice cream truck here, bl blasting the top off the hydrant. I mean, these are some fun little guys. This guy's breaking a thermometer in half. Um, the sun is excited to be there. Uh, I guess maybe we might be looking at a, um, like a Fago bomb pop situation where it's supposed to replicate the flavor of those like red, white, and blue popsicles that you get sometimes. And those kind of taste like generic gummy worms. So I think we might end up landing in the same realm here. What's up, dog? I was at the Giant Eagle about an hour and 45 minutes ago. Um, I saw this out on the floor. It was not in a fridge at the Giant Eagle. It was in a freestanding cardboard thing where all the bottles were at room temperature. Uh, when I got home, I put it in the fridge, but the fridge has not really had a chance to cool it yet uh, before I removed it from the fridge to film this video. So my first impression sip is going to be a little bit below but room temperature but not ice cold and we'll see how that affects the flavor palette and then uh, maybe I'll try it over ice as well. Ooh! The piss on that. Ooh, seeing a lot of uh, small bubbles here, kind of a champagne effect. And I have great news. The, the smell, it's gas station gummy worms. There might be a hint of, like, a lime. 
Yeah, I think that this is Fourth of July popsicle flavor. So good. Which is not a flavor I hate, but is not something I usually go for. The Bomb Pop Fago is not a favorite of mine in the Fago family of sodas. I think I had one. I think I had one maybe 10 months ago while I was at the laundromat. Uh, and I don't remember if I finished it. So let's give this a sip and see, see if it's the taste of the summer. That's quite sweet. That, that's sugar. And I'm not actually detecting a lot of nuance beyond, beyond sugar. I guess it does taste a lot like the Bomb Pop Fago, uh, which is to say that it tastes basically like uh, corn syrup, and there's not really, like... The brightness of color sets me up to anticipate a tartness that I'm not getting. Um, freeze sets me up to anticipate some kind of cooling effect. Um, if you guys are familiar with Kool-Aid Ice, which is a product that I think Maybe I'm the only person uh, who st still talks about it, or rather, every time I mention Kool-Aid Ice in some conversation, I feel confident that I am the last person who has mentioned it. Um, but Kool-Aid Ice basically was like uh, a mentholated Kool-Aid, kind of like a camel crush, but with Kool-Aid. Um, and so it had like cough drop chemicals in it. The gimmick being that because it made your mouth and breath feel cold, there was no need to uh, serve the Kool-Aid chilled. It wasn't good. I'm not saying they should have done this here. I just was kind of riffing on the color of it. I'll go in for another. I'll go in for another warm sip, and then we'll see if it's improved cold. I'm liking it more with each sip, or maybe I'm just getting used to it. But I don't, I don't know if I love it. I'm gonna try a couple of things. Okay, I have here a nice frosty mug with some ice cubes in it. And uh, I'm gonna do a cool, I can't unscrew it with one hand. I should have just left it open on the table. I'm gonna see if maybe, if it's ice cold. If this is better. This looks crazy. This is a good color. This is a flavor that I think belongs in a freezer pop or otter pop, if that's what you call them where it just is kind of, it's a bright color, and it's sugary, and it's gone fast enough that you don't have time to think about what the flavor is supposed to be based on, because the flavor is sugar with like maybe a hint of some kind of modifier. It's been many years since I had one of those 4th of July popsicles, um, and so if that's what they're going for, I can't really vouch for the accuracy. but it is better cold. Oops, I started the shot. All right. Now, as some of you may be aware, I did achieve widespread global viral success and acclaim some time ago for a goof I posted where I did kind of an improv exercise, and I came up with a funny cocktail name for every combination I could think of, of a flavor of Mountain Dew and a variety of spirit. This is a new Mountain Dew that did not exist when I made that post. And so I thought, why not give it a try, see if this is a context where Summer Freeze is any good, and if it is, maybe give it a name. Here I have a mug with ice, from which I've enjoyed a spin on this variety of beverage many times. We'll start with, you know, maybe roughly half of a 
half of your vessel of that. Here I have half a lime. I'm going to cut a decorative wheel. I'm going to get a cutting board. Embarrassing that there's film of my first instinct being to be just cut this on the counter. I'm going to cut a decorative wheel just so that it's, uh, you know, looks nice. Append that to the cup. Now I'm going to take this and uh, juice it right in there. When I'm making a beverage with a lime in it, I frequently like to uh, just put the smushed lime right in the cup um, so that it kind of limes it up a little extra. <clears throat> and, I ha and I have some vodka here and I... When I had this idea for this part of the video, I really, uh, I really hadn't and hauled about whether I was going to put any alcohol in the thing. Because, one, it's 3.46 p.m. right now, so I don't think it's socially acceptable to be drinking a cocktail. Um, two, I didn't look up if you're allowed to drink alcohol on YouTube. I don't know if it's like TV or not. Um, and now it's too late. And three, just in my personal journey, I think maybe that I, the real man Jack Grimes, do drink alcohol sometimes, but maybe the character of Jack the Snackmaster is sober for personal reasons. Um, and I don't want to disrespect that about the world that I'm building and sort of the implied inner world of Jack the Snackmaster that, you know, I try and give you guys kind of a twisted peek into um, by making these videos about uh, chips and stuff. So I think we're gonna leave this, um, we're gonna leave this vodka free. I'm gonna give it a little stir here with the straw. And so I guess basically all I'm doing is seeing if adding a little bit of lime makes this soda better, and I think the answer will be yes. <laughs> Yeah, that's like five times better than it was uh, plain. Um, absolutely recommend doing that. That's, okay, that's gone from like, I could suffer through a bottle of this to like, I would crush a bottle of this. If this is what it tasted like out of the thing, I would be saying, big time hit, Bev of the Summer, gotta get some now, go to the Giant Eagle, or maybe a place where they respect you enough to put it in the fridge um, and grab one. Uh, but, you know, you gotta do this yourself. If you want something, uh, if you want a Bev done right, you gotta make it yourself in a mule mug that you, um, stole from your old roommate. You know what, fuck it. I'm gonna put a little body in there, and if I find out you're not allowed to do that on YouTube, or if I decide that it's a bad look, uh, I, it just won't make the edit. Just a little splat. Not, I'm not trying to get, like, crazy at 4 p.m. Uh, on a Wednesday. I'm just trying to see, like, how does that affect the flavor. Dries it out a little bit. Actually dries it out considerably, but I don't think in a bad way at all. Um, if this was a more complicated soda to begin with, I think it would open up some exciting new flavor doors, and it would maybe let you experience some of the subtleties. As it is, I think it mostly just now tastes like, um, it pretty much now just tastes like, um, is there a name for a cocktail where it's just, like, seltzer and lime and vodka and, like, a little syrup, like a, not, like a gingerless Moscow mule? That ain't bad. I've had, I've made worse. I've imagined worse. Didn't make most of those, though. Well, now it's time to apply the classic Snagmaster rating scale, um, which I was really thrilled to um, share some of the secrets behind uh, at the Snack Review Summit with some of my peers. Um, this rating scale, of course, ranges from tastes like Gak, which means I thought it was very bad, to Jack would drink this beverage again, um, which means that I thought it was pretty good. Uh, Mountain Dew, Summer Freeze. 
I guess I have somehow managed to extract three rateable items from this single bottle of Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew Summer Freeze at roughly room temperature. It wasn't offensive to me, but also it wasn't that good. Well, I guess that is the taste of summer Americana. It's not groundbreaking, it's not interesting, it's remotely pleasing to sort of your most base creature senses and then it's gone. This, now that I think about it, this really is the taste of summer Americana. They've done something kind of profound here. This is the taste of riding with your buddies to your local suburban AMC to watch Ant-Man and the Wasp, or whatever the newer one is. This is the taste of getting abandoned by your parents at the public pool um, because they can't take off work to do anything interesting with you. Uh, and then just sucking down Otter Pops and breathing in chlorine all day. This is the taste of summer Americana. It's an uninteresting kind of saccharine drivel that you don't need to think about for a second longer than it takes to suck down. And so I guess now I've managed to extract four rateable items from this one bottle of Mountain Dew. Summer freeze at room temperature from the store, I'm going to give a 4.5. Summer freeze as a statement on the disposability of American culture as kind of a post vaporwave liquid observation on where we might be headed as a society. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna drink that beverage again. Mountain Dew Summer Freeze over ice. Maybe like a 4.5, 5. It was a little bit better. Um, and then Mountain Dew Summer Freeze with a little lime. That's gonna be a solid 8 for me. That's, if you're gonna get this, I think that's how you should experience it. Or experience it both ways. Drink some at whatever temperature it was um, in the air-conditioned grocery store. Reflect on how its flavor represents um, the loss of interest in highbrow concepts uh, as we sort of careen past the edge of the predicted decline of capitalism. Um, and then maybe squeeze a little lime in there and have yourself a nice little summer treat. Well, I hope you've enjoyed another beverage review video with me, Jack the Snack Master. Feel free to like and subscribe if you're, if this was interesting or entertaining to you in any way. Um, at this point, I kind of am just making it because I enjoy making it and making myself laugh as I put various PNGs on the timeline in Sony Vegas. Um, and I hope you have a nice day.